In this episode of Toxicity Tests, we're going to look at skin sensitization. The first two slides are taken from the Autox website. This slide reads, The globally harmonized system for classification and labeling of chemicals defines a skin sensitizer as a substance that will induce an allergic response following skin contact. This slide shows the animal tests which are used to identify skin sensitizers. It reads, prior to review of the mouse local lymph node assay by the ICCVAM, which stands for the Interagency Coordination Committee on the Validation of Alternative Methods, uh, which is the US equivalent of the ECVAM, which is the European Centre for the Validation of Alternative Methods, and it goes on in 1999. The traditional test accepted by regulatory authorities for the assessment of a substance skin sensitization potential were two guinea pig tests. The guinea pig maximization test and the Bula test. The second paragraph reads, currently the mouse local lymph node assay is the preferred and accepted method for assessing skin sensitization of most substances. Compared to the guinea pig tests, the local lymph node assay reduces animal use as well as pain and suffering. It is also faster and provides dose response information. The local lymph node assay is appropriate for testing most types of substances. Exceptions, such as substances that do not adhere sufficiently to the mouse ear, are described in agency documents. The European Centre for the Validation of Alternative Methods recently validated the reduced local lymph node assay for skin sensitization, which provides an additional reduction in numbers of animals used. Next we're going to look at this slide entitled Non-Animal Alternatives for Skin Sensitization, a Step Forward. Uh, it's from Toxological Sciences and it's an Oxford journal. It reads, For both animal welfare reasons, as well as to meet the demands of existing and impending legislation in Europe, there is an increasing emphasis on the replacement of animals in toxicology testing for endpoints such as skin sensitization. However, many of the endpoints, chronic toxicity, teratology, may prove intractable. That's very debatable. Anyway, it goes on. So there is a heavy focus on endpoints such as irritation and sensitization. In this issue of Toxicological Sciences, there is a fascinating new paper by Nash and Emter on how genes involved in the response to antioxidants are impacted by exposure to chemicals which are potential skin sensitizers. Their hypothesis was that all organic chemicals must react covertly with skin protein in order to behave as skin sensitizers and that this reactivity could be detected at the cellular level via a regulatory pathway activated by electrophiles. The pathway depends on sensor protein Kelch-like ECH-associated protein 1, which contains highly reactive cytine residues. Anyway, approximately 100 chemicals were examined in the present study, a much larger number than normally associated with a first publication of an alternative method, with the findings that most of the skin sensitizers did indeed activate this pathway which essentially is part of the cellular systems for eliminating toxic reactive substances. Importantly, in the context of skin sensitization, irritant materials generally fail to activate this pathway. So you're going to be able to distinguish between the two. It goes on, overall, a prediction accuracy of about 82% was achieved, which is only a little lower than was obtained during the validation of the local lymph node assay in 1999. 
Although some might be concerned by the failure of this in vitro system to detect almost 20% of the sensitizers, the authors addressed this issue by invoking the conduct of complementary assays, such as peptide binding or in silico methods, which we will be looking at a little later. This company called Zetox also uses gene expression to ascertain whether a substance is a skin sensitizer. The first sentence of this slide reads, Zetox can help you meet Amendment 7 and reach directives and reduce or even replace the need for in vivo testing. Um, if we go to the uh, third paragraph down, it reads, the CTOX approach monitors the expression of up to six genes over concentration and time. Evaluation of the gene expression response in terms of magnitude, potency and time allows an in vitro toxicity index to be calculated. It's not entirely clear what CTOX actually call their test. I mean, I think it's called dermal sensitization test. Anyway, the penultimate paragraph reads, The proprietary method surpasses other in vitro methods that classify responses as merely positive or negative. Like the local lymph node assay, EC3 test, they say their approach can differentiate specific degrees of response from non-sensitizer, i.e. a substance not being a skin sensitizer at all, a very weak skin sensitizer, a weak skin sensitizer, a moderate skin sensitizer, and a strong skin sensitizer, all the way up to an extreme skin sensitizer. So this CTOX test seems to have a very high degree of specificity about it, like the last test did also. It will probably be therefore used as part of the battery of tests needed to predict skin sensitizers in the future. Let's now go back to the Autox website. In this slide I'm just interested in the last few lines, which read, With the forthcoming elimination of in vivo tests for cosmetic testing in the European Union, Several opportunities that have been exploited in vitro test development focus on key elements of the sensitization process. So, when uh, the elimination of vivo tests, that is tests involving animals, comes into force, you are going to need in vitro tests that have been validated to test for skin sensitizers which is a bit worrying when we read this slide because it says validated non-animal methods are not yet available for assessing skin sensitization. The only validated alternative methods are the mouse local lymph node assay and the mouse reduced local lymph node assay which are both animal tests anyway. Uh, in the bottom you can see that they are hoping that they will get full replacement, but at the moment, they're nowhere near it. There, there are no validated tests to replace the animal tests. As regards the in silico methods, i.e. with QZAR, this PubMed paper from the School of Pharmacy and Chemistry at Liverpool John Moores University sounds quite encouraging. Its title is Identification of Mechanisms of Toxic Action for Skin Sensitization Using a Smart Pattern Based Approach. Personally, I don't really understand very much about it, but there might be some people that understand it out there, so I'll start reading from about halfway down and you can see how you get on. Thus, a first step in QZAR analysis is the assignment of a chemical's potential mechanism of action, enabling it to be placed in an appropriate reactive domain. The aim of this study was to design a series of smart patterns capable of defining these reactivity domains. This was carried out using a large database of local lymph node assay results that had potential mechanisms of action assigned to them using expert knowledge. 
A simple algorithm was written enabling the smarts patterns to be used to screen a database of smiles strings. The smarts patterns were then evaluated using a second smaller test set of local lymph node assay results which had also had potential mechanisms of action assigned by experts. The results showed that the SMARTS patterns provided an excellent method of identifying potential electrophilic mechanisms. The findings are supported, in part, by molecular orbital calculations which confirm assignment of reactive mechanism of action. The ability to define a chemical's potential reaction mechanism is likely to be of significant benefit to regulators and risk assessors as it enables category formation and subsequent read across to be performed. This slide is about peptide reactivity. It comes from your talk's website uh, and it just fills in some of the gaps which the gene expression uh, experiments don't uh, predict. So it will be needed in the battery of tests, you know, the peptide reactivity assays. Anyway, let's quickly read it. Several labs have developed peptide reactive assays to screen for chemical allergens. Uh, this method is based on an early step of the mechanism of induction of skin sensitization, the binding of the chemical allergen to skin proteins and or peptides. Most known chemical allergens are electrophilic, that is electron seeking, usually positively charged, and react with peptides or protein amino acids that are nucleophiles, electron donors. The ability of known chemical allergens to bind with nucleophilic amino acids has been shown to correlate to the skin sensitization potential of a chemical. So again, that sounds quite complicated. Uh, let's move on now and see what the next slide's about. This slide is about politics in a sense. Uh, the European Commission is supporting a project called Sense-Iv Project, a really difficult name to say. But uh, if they're supporting it, there's political will behind this project. There's probably money behind it as well. So this is very encouraging and uh, hopefully they will be able to replace the animal test completely in the near future. Anyway, this slide reads, The European Commission is supporting the sensitive project with the goal of developing in vitro alternatives to animal tests currently used for the risk assessment of potential skin or lung sensitizers. The sense it if research is being performed by 28 European Union university and industry labs. The most recent study results can be obtained in the Sense It If newsletters. A summary of the accomplishments of the first 12 months of this program included the categorization and optimization of culture conditions for various human cell lines generation of gene expression profiles for several types of cells and development of a 3D epidermal skin model for studying epithelial dendritic cell interactions. Methods and cellular models that incorporate T cells are being developed including proteum protein expression profiles of all three cell types and methods to investigate haptin formation in vitro.